Hey guys, welcome back to another Guitar Basics series at Pass the Guitar Live. And in today's video, we're gonna cover one of the most important process any guitar player or aspiring guitar player needs to know. I have heard so much from so many people that the reason why they don't pick up the guitar is because they don't know how to change the strings. Whether they're missing a string on the guitar or they don't have any strings on the guitar or the strings are too old. Well, in this video, we're gonna cover a bulletproof step-by-step -step process that will eradicate this problem once and for all. But before we move to the process, let's go over the list of tools that we're gonna need in order to go through this process. And first of all, we're gonna need a new set of strings. It doesn't matter what brand you get, I want you to pay attention to the gauge Make sure if you want something light to go with 11s or 10s or if you want medium go with 12s and if you want something a little more stiff and hard tension go to 13s. The other tool that we need is this little guy here, a wire cutter. Yes, as simple as that and they are super cheap. Get yourself one of those. I'm providing a list of tools with links in the description of this video. Now let's head over to the tools that actually can make this process a lot easier and less frustrating. But these tools are not necessary, but I highly recommend. And first of all, it's this guy, a string winder. This makes loosening up and tightening up the strings so much easier. They come from different brands and they do some, some of them do more than just winding the strings like this one. It comes with this little device that you can actually cut the strings. So if you get this guy here, you don't need a string or a wire cutter. But if you wanna make winding the strings even easier, get one of these babies. This is an electric string winder. I got this one two years ago and it made my life so much easier. I have to change strings for so many guitars and before it was a brutal process. Now, it's as easy as eating a slice of cake. All right, moving forward, we're gonna need a cloth. This one is pretty dirty. It doesn't really matter what cloth you use as long as it's not gonna scratch the guitar. It's gonna be good to clean up some areas of the guitar that we don't get to clean very often because the strings are on the way. The following two is this guy here, lemon oil. Lemon oil is great to rejuvenate the fretboard of the guitar, but it also helps remove the gunk and the dirt that gets stuck to the fretboard from our fingers. And if you sweat as much as I do on your hands, you're probably gonna want one of these. Get yourselves also a pencil. We're gonna be needing a pencil. And last but not least, we need a tuner. You can use a clip-on tuner like this one. You clip to the headstock of the guitar, or you can get a free app on your phone. There's free tuning apps on both the iPhones and Android phones. So there's no excuses there, right? Now that we have the list of the tools, if you have the essential tools and you're ready to move on, let's head over to the operation table and take a look at our patient. All right, now that we have our patient ready to receive a new set of strings, we are going to move into the step-by-step -step process. But before we do that, just make sure you find a flat surface so you can place the guitar on top. It could be a kitchen counter, a dining room table, an office desk, anywhere you can fit the guitar on top of and it won't move around. You can also use a towel underneath the guitar so you will prevent scratching underneath the guitar, the body of it, and you can use a hand towel rolled up as chunky as you can to place it underneath the neck, giving it a stability so the guitar doesn't wobble when you are maneuvering and changing the strings. With that, I also want to recommend, highly recommend you keeping your tools close by because you're gonna need to use them on many of these processes. And if you have them handy, 
you make the process less frustrating. All right, good with that. Let's move on to step number one, which is to what? To loosen up the strings. And for that, I'm gonna use the string winder. And with that, I'm gonna place the string winder on the tuning pack that I'm gonna be loosening up, which is the, I'm gonna start with the low E string. Before I start turning the tuning pack, I want to uh, give you guys a tip. You can pluck the string to give it, to hear the sound right before you turn so that as you're turning, you can hear if the sound is getting lower or higher and will prevent you from over tightening the string and eventually snapping it off. Okay, so here goes. I will pluck the string first and then I'll turn. And as I hear the sound is getting lower, I'm on the right direction. So I keep turning until the string gets loose enough. That's good. Making no sound. Now I'm gonna repeat the same process with all of the other strings. All right, now that we have the strings loose, and you can tell they're loose because they're not making any desirable sound, we're ready to move to step number two, which is to cut the strings. And I'm gonna use a wire cutter for that. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna do one string at a time, and we're gonna cut the string right on the sound hole area. So I'm gonna pick the sixth string, starting with the sixth string, and I'm gonna go there and just Cut that string. There we go. You now repeat the process with all of the other strings. All right, now that we have cut the strings, we're ready to move to step number three. And step number three is we're gonna remove the strings from both the bridge and the headstock. But we're gonna start with the bridge. And for that, we're gonna use our string winder again and the string winder comes with this gap area here. And it's made so that you can insert it right around the bridge pin. So you can pull that bridge pin off. And there we go. And with that, well, you can make it a little bit more if it's too tight. And with that, you have the bridge pin off. You can pull it with your hand. Make sure when you pull the string off, you put that bridge pin right back inside so that you don't lose that pin and you also remember which pin belongs to what string. And here we have the remainder string, we dispose of it and we're gonna move on to the next strings. But if you don't have a string winder, you can use your wire cutter, but make sure you don't press too hard. We're trying to just create some leverage around the pin to pull it up. See, I'm not pressing too hard. I am just using it to remove. You could also use some pliers for that. I remove the string, dispose of it, and replace that bridge pin back in there. And then now we're gonna repeat the same process with the other strings. Now that we remove the strings from the bridge, it's time to remove them from the headstock. And for that one, it's super easy because we don't need to use any tools. You're just gonna use your hand. We're gonna hold the string end and you're gonna unwind it from the tuning peg itself. But make sure you keep your face away from it so that when you pull it off, it doesn't snap on your face. Safety first. So. I'm gonna go around here and unwind it. And just like that, the string came off. And now I'm gonna repeat the process with all of the other strings. Now that we have all of the strings off, I like it to coil them around at least once. It makes it easier for us to dispose. If it doesn't stick, 
coil it one more time. And just like that, you can dispose of it. Which leads us to the next step, which is step number four. We're gonna use that cloth that we had to clean the guitar, the areas that we are unable to do when the strings are on. And the areas are around the bridge, give it a good wipe there, also here close to the neck, and the headstock of the guitar itself. Give it a good wipe. I do like to wipe the entire guitar to remove any dust, dirt, or oils from our hands. And with that, we can move in to step number five, which is not a necessary step, which is to apply lemon oil. If you do not want to apply lemon oil or you, you don't have lemon oil, you can skip this step and just move on to the next chapter. I'm gonna apply because I do like to give a new fresh start for my fretboard and help clean up some of the gunk and dirt on the fretboard that I get a lot because I sweat a lot on my hands. So I use this, this is very old, and you can tell that they last a very long time. And it's super simple to apply. My lemon oil comes with a easy to apply tip. All you have to do is just like you would paint or wipe or mark the fretboard with this part of the bottle. Just put some pressure, you're gonna turn it upside down, bring it here, put it some pressure and just mark it like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the second fret and repeat the process with all the other frets. Now that we have the lemon oil there, what is left to do is get that cloth again and wipe off the excess and with it all of the dirt and gunk. So all you're gonna do is come to the first fret here, you give it a good wipe, and then voila, you have it, it looks beautiful. You're gonna repeat the process with all of the other frets. And now that we finally have the guitar all clean and prepped, we are ready to move to step number six, which is to install the strings on the bridge. And for that, we're gonna need our set of strings. I'm using this brand, Elixirs. And you can use whatever brand, but the important thing here is that every brand packs their strings differently. So it's really important that you keep your box because if they pack it differently, they will also give you instructions on which string is which on the box. This brand specifically packs the strings on individual envelopes. As you see here. And it's labeled by the number of the tension and the thickness of the string, the gauge of the string. So you know which string is which. Some other brands will actually pack all of the strings together. And they will label for you on the box somewhere which strings are which because they will color this area of the string. Let me pull off this string here. This is my sixth string. And in this brand specifically, you don't, the ball itself is just bronze and all of the other strings are gonna be the same. But if you find a brand that packs everything together, they usually put the color of these balls different and they label these colors on their box. So don't throw your box away. All right, have my first string here, which is the sixth string. Get rid of that envelope. And first thing I need to do with this string is to uncoil it. Make sure you hold it and you kind of keep it away from your face. Just unwind it like that, keeping it away from your face so you don't get hurt as it uncoils. And now you have the two ends of the string. You do have the thin end, which is gonna go on the headstock, and the ball itself, which goes on the bridge. 
and we're gonna start with the ball itself. Okay, so let's get it inside that hole. Just place it there, and I'm gonna get my pin with, you see that the pins come with a little gap, and that gap needs to be facing the string. So make sure that that gap is facing the string, place it on top, and push the string down. Pull the string to completely lock it in place. And when you do that, you're done with this process. Move the string to the side. And with that, we're gonna do, repeat the process with all the strings. Now I'm gonna move to the fifth string. All right, now that we have all of our strings installed on the bridge of the guitar, it's time to install them on the headstock. But before we do that, there are a couple of things that I highly recommend you do because it will make the process a lot easier. First of all, I'm gonna use a pencil, just a regular pencil. And I'm gonna go into the nut and I'm gonna paint on top of the gaps of the nut. And that will help lubricate the area so the strings don't move around as much. So just paint it a little bit, go to the second one, third one, fourth one, and the last is the high E. And I know that it looks a little messy, but we'll wipe that off when we're done uh, installing all the strings. The second thing, that I highly recommend is that you have a tuner close by. I'm using a tuner app on my phone, which you can find many free tuner apps on phones, whether you use an iOS, an iPhone, or an Android. But I'm also using here a clip-on tuner, two tuners. And why do I do that? So that when I'm tightening up the strings and installing them, I look to stop tighten up when I get close to the note that that string is supposed to be, avoiding over tightening and eventually possibly snapping the string, which could even harm you. So make sure you use these recommendations. All right, let's move on. I'm gonna start with the low E string. And the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna get the low E string through the, the first tuning peg here on the top. We're gonna put it inside that hole and we're gonna pull it all the way until we see that it's completely uh, tense. Well, one side note, you always want to begin by installing the strings from the closest to the fretboard to the farthest away. So you would do on the top side of the guitar, first the E, A, and the D string. And on the bottom side of the guitar, you're gonna do the high E, B, and G strings. All right, now that we're here, we need to measure how much string we're gonna pull back in order to have enough string to wind it around the tuning peg. What I like to do is use the distance of two tuning pegs. So I go where I see a tuning peg above, and you see this distance, just like, it doesn't have to be precise, just use it by, by eye, just measure by eye and make sure you are holding here. And as you're holding, you pull the string back to the tuning peg where you're installing the string. And now we have enough loose string on this side to wind around this tuning peg. The next step before I start winding up the string around this tuning peg is to lock it in place. Something that I learned with a friend of mine, Luthier, the Z lock. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my thumb to pull this string from this side towards the outside of the headstock and use my index to push the strings towards the center of the headstock, just like this. Push it hard and create a Z like this. Help the string go that way. And with that, 
you see now the string is locked in place. It won't move as much around and it will help you as you're winding the string around and locking it and installing it in a tuning bag. And for that, now moving to the process of winding, I'm gonna use my string winder to help me with the process, but you can do this by hand, which I did for so many years in my life. So before you start turning it around, we need to talk about the technique that I'm gonna use. And the technique is one time on the top, the rest on the bottom, which means that the first time that I'm gonna go around, wind the string around the tuning peg, I'm gonna keep the string above that hole. And after that, I'm gonna move to winding them underneath the hole, but starting from the hole area, moving towards the face of the headstock. So let's do the first step. I'm gonna be pulling here, creating some tension, and I'm gonna start going around. And as you can see, the first time around will be, I'm gonna make sure that that string that is coming on, it's gonna come underneath so that this one goes on the top. Remember, the technique is on top first and then the rest on the bottom. So now that I get here one time around, as soon as you see where you inserted the string, you're gonna bring this string down. And from that point on, the string is gonna be winding going towards the face of the fret or the face of the headstock. I'm gonna help the string right here, pull it up a little bit so it doesn't get stuck. And make sure your layers go from the hole to the face of the headstock. You keep going around until you feel that it's really tight. You can place it here back on the nut. Make sure that you see those layers creating going on the direction of the face of the headstock. Now that I have a good tension, remember the app. We're gonna now try to bring the string to the note that it's supposed to be, which is a low E. So we don't pass that low E. So right now, it's getting close to that low E. There we are. It is tuned, but we're not looking to actually tune the guitar. We're just wanting to not go too far with the tension of the string itself. And with that, you're done with this, and it's time to cut the excess string right there, as close as you can to the tuning peg. We wanna do that because that's very dangerous. This can actually poke you in the eye. So we don't want that dispose of this end of the string. And now you have it all the way here, wind it around, ready to be tuned when we're done with everything. From this point on, we're gonna repeat the process around. So remember, I'm gonna do first A after that, and then D string, moving to the bottom side of the strings of the headstock, I'm gonna do the high E first, B, and then the G. So let's get those strings here. All right, we got the top ones. Now it's starting to go to the bottom side. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna start with the high E because the high E is the closest one to the nut, to the fretboard. And don't forget, the same way that we wind the strings on the, on the top, going from the center of the headstock to the outside, we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom side of the headstock, going from the center to the outside, okay? Same process is applied. But before we move on, the, I'm using my right hand to create the Z. Make sure you're pushing here with your thumb outside and with your index inside to create that Z. 
Good. Now we're ready to start winding it. One on the top and the rest on the bottom. Making sure that we do have it underneath after that. We can place it in place on the position on the nut itself. Keep going until we get some tension. When we're gonna get tension, keep an eye on your tuner so you don't pass. As you can see, we're just around that E. Right there. We're ready to move to the next one. Repeat the process with B and G. Cut it right, first of all. Cut it right at the tuning peg. And dispose of it. Move on to the other two strings. Great, now that we actually put and installed all of the strings on the headstock, and as you can see, all of them are going winding from the inside of the headstock, from the center to the outside, all of the top strings and all of the bottom strings here as well. Make sure your looks like that, they're all winded here perfectly, nothing is on top of each other on the tuning pegs, as you can see. We are ready to move into the final step, step number eight, which is to tune the guitar, but at the same time, we're gonna pull on the strings a little bit to help the strings settle in place. We're not gonna wank the strings, we're just gonna lightly pull them like this. We're gonna do that with all of the strings. Hold the guitar so the guitar doesn't come towards you. You can Push it or pull in your way. Go there. First string as well. And with that, we're gonna tune. So I'm also, I have my tuner there, my app tuner, and I'm also gonna turn on my clip on tuner. So we're gonna start with the low E. And we're low. Let's get to that E. Almost there. There we go. We got it. Moving on to the A string, we're gonna repeat the same process and tune everything. Now the guitar is tuned. The next step is to repeat step number eight at least one more time, so we guarantee the strings are really balanced and settled. And there you go, as promised, a bulletproof step-by-step -step process that will solve this problem once and for all. Now you can change the strings of your guitar if you haven't done during this video and go click on another video on our channel and learn how to play some of your favorite songs. But before you do that, just click on that subscribe button if you haven't done, click on that bell and like this video. Your support really helps us. But if you want more than what you find on our YouTube channel, head over to Pass the Guitar Live. Our community is packed with lots of more content and then people to learn with. It's amazing. Opportunities to play on virtual open mics, virtual jam sessions. Head over to www.passtheguitar.live and check it for yourself. My name is David Cordero and I'll see you on the next video.